once was a beautiful American girl named Isabel. Isabel's father raised her and recently passed away, leaving Isabel all by herself. This made Isabel very independent, and now she values the freedom she has been given. She did not want to tie herself down. Isabel, wait! No, Casper. I really thought you were not. I'm not going to marry you. Isabel traveled to Europe with her aunt. Upon arriving, she was greeted with her uncle, cousin, and her cousin's friend. Her cousin, Ralph, and she, though they had never met, were instantly close. Warburton, Ralph's friend, was taken with Isabel's beauty and blinded to reality. Isabel's uncle, Mr. Touche, warned, her, warned him not to pursue her because he believed American women were very secretive, but Warburton ignored the warning and proposed anyway. Scandalous. Isabel, I know we just met, but will you marry me? Um, I don't think so. Uh -huh. I have more important things to do in my life uh -huh. than settle down. One year later, Henrietta, Isabel's best friend, notices that Europe has been slowly transforming Isabel's informal American customs to an, into traditional ways. She invites Casper to visit Isabel and hopefully marry her. Mr. Chouchet's death left Isabel with a large amount of inheritance, which attracted Madame Merle, who introduced her to Osmond, a widowed art collector. In order to convince her to marry him so he can use her money, because secretly Merle and Osmond were in a relationship. Isabel remained invisible to Osmond's plans, however, he failed to convince her friends in the same way. Girl, I think you misjudged Osmond. I'm not sure his intentions are true. I mean, he's not good enough for you. Henrietta, you know I love you like a friend? You don't know him like you do. <sighs> Isabel's stubbornness proves to be a flaw here because she is unaware of Osmond's motivations. One year into their marriage, Isabel has already given birth and lost a child. Three years later is when their relationship begins to fall. You are pathetic! You are never going to leave! Ever! Meanwhile, Osmond's daughter from his pre previous marriage, Pansy, has been away and fallen in love with Rosier, an American art collector, in Paris. Pansy returns home and takes Rosier with her. Osmond instantly disapproves of them and encourages Pansy to pursue Warburton, who has just declared his immense love he had for Pansy in order to get closer to Isabel. Pansy! You are so fine. So is your mom. Though, when Warburton confesses to Isabel that he still loves her and not Pansy, Osmond becomes furious and Madame Merle supports him. After this, Isabel soon becomes aware of their affair. You are a screw up. Pansy's so unhappy and it's all your fault because Warburton loved you, not Pansy. What kind of thing is that? That's like awful. It's all, all your fault. Pathetic and worthless. That's what you are. Madame Merle agrees with me. Merle? She agrees with you? Who does she think she is? She doesn't want to say this. Osmond's sister, Countess, visits from England where Ralph is slowly dying of one disease. Isabel. Not very well. He wants you to visit him as soon as possible. You should really go before he passes. It could be good for you. And in Countess's gossipy nature, she spills the truth about Osmond and Merle to Isabel. Merle is Pansy's mother. What? Osmond's wife died about the same time, so he said that she died giving birth to Pansy. Pansy doesn't know. Osmond, I want to visit Ralph. I think he's dying! I want to see him before he passes! 
You will do no such thing. You are untrustworthy. You will cheat on me with your cousin, because that's the kind of nasty thing you would do. <laughs> like you did to me? Isabel is not, not able to visit Ralph before he passes. She attends his funeral and is surprised to see Casper there. Casper encourages Isabel to escape with him and tries to convince her that it is not too late. She, she, she says she will think about it, but Casper waits to a surprising result. Isabel has returned home to Pansy. Okay, go. Oh my god, you're so heavy! <laughs>